Vengeance solves little, but it can be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your Windwalker guide for 725 and onwards. I am ridiculously excited for this one. This is a spec I recommended to a huge amount of people in Legion Alpha. And for the most part, that has worked out extremely well with people, even after recent nerfs to their overall damage, being extremely happy with the gameplay of the Windwalker. And I'm more than happy to share it with you now. We are going to learn how to play the spec that I have recommended to so many people. I'm so excited to talk about the Windwalker. I want more and more people to try this. I don't care if they're currently having struggling at the mythic level. There's still plenty of mythic Windwalkers out there. And you guys can join them because this spec is a whole bunch of fun. And I want you guys to try it out. So, what is the Windwalker all about? Why do I recommend it to so, so many people? Well, it has one of the most unique gameplay styles in the entire game. And that gameplay style is one thematic thematically awesome and fits the theme so well and i think blizzard should be uh, very welcome hi so what is it let me first of all before we get into everything we have to understand a few basic things firstly mastery combo strikes your abilities deal 35 percent more damage when they are not a repeat of the previous ability sounds very simple but my god does this change everything that goes on with the Windwalker. It really does. What this does is give weight to pretty much every single ability you press. And that's something that no other class can really attest to. So that l lots of people will talk to you about filler spells, nonsense like that, right? Filler spells and stuff that you do while you're waiting for the cool stuff to come back. Not so with the Windwalker. Every single spell and ability you have matters because it's going to contribute to this mastery. This is our mastery. This is what you get when you actually stack the stat mastery, okay? So I want you to bear in mind that this exists as we go through this. We have a huge amount of very cool abilities that look fantastic animated-wise. We have a generator. So what we have is two resources. We have our chi which you're going to get five of typically, and our energy, okay? And balancing both of those things is what we're going to be doing so we're not wasting any resources. So we're going to spend energy with our Tiger Palm. That's going to give us two chi. And then we're going to spend it on one of our abilities. Those abilities are Rising Sun Kick, which costs two chi. Does 800,000 damage on a nine second cooldown, pretty much. Our Fists of Fury costs three chi, 20 second cooldown. Pummels all the targets for a million damage. Uh, we also have a Blackout Kick for one chi, right? This is very simple. This is kind of like the Filler Spell, but not really because that Mastery does 300,000 damage. And also we have uh, Strike of the Windlord, which costs two chi. Uh, strike with both the Fists of the Heavens, those are your artifact weapons, are all enemies in front of you dealing 1.6 million damage. And we also have the wonderful ability, Touch of Death, Touch of Death, Touch of Death, ripped straight from the Simpsons. Use Ancient Pandera Knowledge to fuck the enemy up uh, for 50% of your maximum health, right? So it does damage equal to 50% of your maximum HP on a typically two minute cooldown. We also get a wonderful DPS cooldown called Storm Earth and Fire, where we split into three elements. Whee! Just like this. Unfortunately, it used to be completely within our control. I do kind of pine for those days, as I'm sure many Windwalkers do, uh, but this will do. Uh, so we get our Storm Earth and Fire ability, which creates copies of ourselves, which duplicate our abilities. So if you can see here, Fire Rising Sun Kick. Oh, they just des despawned. Okay, just for sake, I'm going to bring them back because we do get two charges. And I'm going to show you. See the way they all duplicate? Yeah, it looks awesome, doesn't it? And everything we do is going to be duplicated. They'll find other targets to attack should you give them the opportunity to. Yeah, you can see. Very awesome ability. Amongst that, we also have an AOE spell we're going to talk about later called Spinning Crane Kick. But those are your basic go-to filler spells, DPS spells, I should say. I've got the word filler in my head, but I should get rid of it. So bear in mind this mastery combo strikes. Now, I want to show you just exactly how this works. It's based on not pressing the spell you had previously, right? The spell you used previously. So if we spend energy with Tiger Palm to generate Chi, and then I use Rising Sun Kick, you see I get hit combo two. Now I can press Tiger Palm again, because I pressed Rising Sun Kick previously. Now I can do Fist of Fury, and you can see I've got hit combo four. I can now Tiger Palm again, because we just used Fist of Fury. I can Blackout Kick. I can a Tiger Palm. I can Rising Sun Kick. And you'll see my hit combo is broken up to six here, right? That means it's doing the maximum benefit it can based on the talent I currently have. And this is something you're going to be doing all the time with your Windwalker is managing this process. And this means that every ability you press is important, right? It's so important because what you're going to be doing is constantly making use of all your abilities. They all matter in some way in order to gain the maximum benefit out of this playstyle. 
So I want you to get used to this. I want you to understand how it works. If you're somebody who spams buttons, so if I did something like spam my blackout kick and then try to change my mind, you'll see that the game actually cues your abilities. I don't know if you know this, but the game checks to see what you're trying to press next so it can keep the flow of combat as best it can be. So if you're somebody who's like spamming an ability like Black Hit Blackout Kick, even though the game's already picked up, you've pressed it, what you might find is you activate it twice and you'll see that wonderful hit combo. If I build up a hit combo here, you can see two, three, four, right? All the way up to six. If I then do something silly, like double blackout kick, you see, oh, I've got the one, but then the other one just gets rid of all that mastery bonus, right? It all disappears. Very, very sad. And we start back from the beginning. So our damage, our damage loss there is real. Now, that's based on a talent, but you get the idea of what I'm saying, okay? So let's look at the talents then. What are the stats we're looking for with this? Now, this gets very tricky. There are some interesting tier bonuses. You can see I have a couple, a couple of bits of the Tomb tier on this guy. And you can see how it's like Rising Sun Kick critical strikes affect the cooldown of Fist of Fury, which lends more weight to crits. And then we have a four set where Fist of Fury ends. The critical strike chance of Rising Sun Kick is increased by 65%. That means we want to get that crit, which gives us like a soft back crit. And now I'm going into the world of blah, 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 which you'll need when you get higher, higher, and higher gear. Now, for that, at that moment, once you realize you're up in the higher gear and you really want to look at the nitty gritty and get buried into like legend legendaries and stuff right that's when you're going to want to check out sites like Pe peak of serenity really good resource but by then you need to have the basic foundation that i'm going to teach you here before you go there okay otherwise it's going to take you a while to sift through a lot of data so bear that in mind is our stats alter with that with that said though i recommend you get about 20 percent haste to get started with and then just work on that mastery which is what we've been talking about since the beginning of the video work on that mastery don't worry about versatility don't worry too much about crit don't worry about too much about haste when you're looking at your 880 890 early 900 item level work on your stats like that then you're probably going to be hitting like quite high gear right you're going to be in like your mythic 15 gear some tier gear from raiding then get buried into what actually happens with legendaries and things like that all right guys Let's talk about here. So our uh, first talent choice is a Chi Burst, Eye of the Tiger, or Chi Wave. Now, Chi Burst technically does more damage. Hurls a torrent of cheats on a 30 second cooldown up to 40 yards forward, dealing 203,000 damage. Now, the interesting thing about these talents, like Eye of the Tiger, Tiger Palm also applies, uh, and Tiger Palm gives Eye of the Tiger. There's a lot of Tiger talk in this video, unfortunately. Uh, dealing 90,000 nature damage to the enemy and 74,000 healing to the monk. And Chi Wave is on a 15 second cooldown, so half that of Chi Burst, uh, and it's instant cast. The way we're looking at this isn't really unlike which does more damage, right? Which bomb is bigger? That's slightly bigger. What we're actually looking at is Chi Wave can be used to keep your mastery going, right? Especially if you're taking hit combo, which most of you be doing in most occasions. Uh, this gives you a free instant cast spell. Doesn't cost anything. It's on a very short cooldown, which means you can use it regularly at your leisure. And it keeps your mastery going. So you can see if I do something here, like uh, get some Chi. So I press Blackout Kick, Chi Wave, and then Blackout Kick again. My hit combo keeps going. And that means if you're, all your big abilities are on cooldown, you have a lot of chi, and your energy's approaching cap, and you don't really have anything to spend it on because you just use blackout kick, and everything else is on cooldown, it can happen on occasion. Then chi wave comes in wonderful there. So it's not really the damage we're after, but we will be using it on cooldown just for the way the Windwalker naturally flows. But that's, it's such a wonderful ability to just have this instant cast ability we could just toss away and keep going with what else we want to worry about, right? Love that we got some movement speed stuff. Celerity reduces the cooldown of roll by five seconds. It gives us an extra charge of roll, but we already kind of have two anyway. And roll is more than enough in most PZ scenarios to get out of things. You think of it like uh, Odin's uh, AoE in Halls of Valor or anything like that, then we can get out of there. And we also have, of course, <laughs> I can't believe that must have got stuck on the floor. Oh, God. Okay, well, that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. Flying Serpent Kick on a 25 second cooldown, so we can actually just dart out if we absolutely need to. Uh, then it's not that useful. Chi Torpedo, once again, 20 second recharge, replaces roll, allows you to go a little bit further and increases your movement speed by 30% for 10 seconds. Very cool. But Tiger's Lust on a 30 second cooldown, one, it gives us a brand new spell to play with so it doesn't fuck around with our rolls that we've already got, right? We still have our Flying Serpent Kick. It gives us an extra spell. Not only that, we can cast it on other people. And so many people don't do this. 
right? Tiger's Lust, particularly, uh, I can tell you when we were doing Mythic Star Augur Astraeus, our uh, DKs in particular, ha ha ha, to my regular viewers, uh, were regularly asking for Tiger's Lust when they got the Frozen Mark because it's, it slows you down and you have to get out of the party to get there quickly. So regularly you'd hear the DK saying, can I have Tiger's Lust, please? Right? And being able to toss that on other people, like I just tossed it on him there, is really handy. So while we already have great movement ourselves, Tiger's Lust is one handy should we need it. Right, should you need the extra zoom zoom, but also the fact you can use it on other players, ah, magnifique. People will love you and find you as a better player if you go, oh god, I can't get there, and then you tigers lust them. They're like, who did that? And you'd be like, me, bro. I know how this spell fucking works. Level 45, a little tricky for new players, but I'm going to talk through it anyway. They're reasonably close to each other. Uh, power Strike, so this is a DPS tier, right? This is a DPS tier. So we have Power Strikes, which is every 15 seconds, your next Tiger Palm, which is our energy spender to generate chi, yeah? Uh, your next Tiger Palm also generates one additional chi. I hate this talent. I've always hated it. I've always hated it. Because I can't track that every 15 seconds, and I don't want to track it either. But what I find with it is I plan, and you guys will probably do the same, is you kind of plan your abilities very carefully. How much chi do I have? How much energy do I have? I have too much chi, I want to dump a bit of chi somewhere, right? You'll be planning it like that. And then with something like... Um, T power strikes happens it really goofs you up <laughs> it, goof it goofs me up anyway you might guys fi might find it quite nice but i don't like that I i've never liked this talent ascension though i do quite like especially if you're very new and a little bit not happy with using energizing elixir so it increases your maximum chi by one that gives you an extra buffer zone so you'll now be able to use six chi and your energy regen by 10 percent, which means you can be a bit more spammy right it's 10 percent. it's not a huge amount but it does give you that little bit of extra leeway a little bit more freedom and it's entirely passive so you don't have to worry about it too much what you should be doing though is aiming to get used to energizing elixir it's technically the best one minute cooldown chug an energizing elixir refilling all your energy and chi so it gives you all chi maximum chi so you get five chi and a full energy bar now why people don't like using this is you obviously want the most benefit out of it you can get if i was to use it let's do so a really stupid test right a really stupid test if I was just somebody who keeps spells on cooldown, which a lot of new players to World of Warcraft do, they probably get some add-ons like mine. They see me, people like me using them, they have this, and they just want to use everything on cooldown, right? So they see they have Energizing Elixir. They might be like, oh, Energizing Elixir's there. I'm going to use it. Or they try and macro it to something or something bizarre like that. Now, if I use this now, it does actually nothing because I already have Chi and full energy. Now, that's an extreme example. But if you want to get the best out of energy and energizing, let's say, you obviously want to be getting rid of energy and chi as best you can and then getting the most out of the ability, which means you need to be pretty good with your Windwalker to get there in the first place, right? You need to be starting to play like you mean what you're doing, right? <laughs> and then getting the most out of it, so... Bear in mind that some new players find the Energizer Elixir a little bit fucking annoying, especially because it's only a one-minute cooldown and you want to get the best out of it. Just bear in mind, I recommend you practice it and get used to it. At level 60, we have some CC. I can't imagine not taking Leg Sweep, honestly. <laughs> there are some scenarios where definitely, uh, it's certainly in raiding, I've seen Black Ox Statue used quite a lot. Uh, but what is it? Leg Sweep, On Demand, AoE Stun, Mythic Plus. Things that are attacking you out in the open world. Stunning stuff to AoE, getting away from danger, somebody just tried to gank you, all these things, leg sweep is the tits. It's five, five second cooldown, stubs them for five seconds, that's plenty of time to get yourself together, get the hell out of there, and hopefully a tank will pick them up. Now, summon Black Ox statue, or commonly known in the community as Dave, uh, summons a Black Ox statue at the target location for 15 minutes, and it pulses threat to all enemies within 30 yards. This means that anything that goes near the Black Ox statue within 30 yards, it's going to try and get aggro on them. Not only that, and people forget this second part of the tooltip, is you can Cast Provoke or Taunt. Uh, provoke, uh, it's called Provoke for the uh, Windwalkers or the Monks. On the statue and it taunts all the enemies to you. Yeah. So if you put Dave down here and all the ads are around it and you cast Taunt on Dave, all the ads will aggro you. There are scenarios, particularly when things get trickier, where that can be very, very helpful. In most occasions, though, if it's something like Tychondrius right? Tychondrius and the Nighthold's a great example, where ads spawn on other sides of the room, and it can be a little bit tricky, especially if the tank's a little weaker, in order to get to those ads quickly. You could put down something like the Summon Black Ox statue and instantly help that tank, because you can stand on top of your statue, on top of your statue, and the ads will naturally run there without him having to do anything, and it can be super useful. Again, different scenarios for different people. Ring of Peace, not really a great use in any raiding that I've found. I've certainly not found it in Mythic Plus. Form a Ring of Peace at a target location for 8 seconds. Enemies that walk into the ring 
will be ejected from the ring. There are uses for Ring of Peace, but I've got to leave that to you to find them. In most occasions, you're rocking Leg Sweep, and there are definitely some scenarios where you want the Black Ox statue, depending on your raid setup. Level 75 again comes down to the situation. So you have Healing Elixir, really cool while you're out in the open world, doing world quests and whatnot, topping yourself up with healing. So a 30 second recharge, drink a Healing Elixir, healing you for 50% of your max HP. Not a great deal, but a heal's always good. Healing Elixir will automatically trigger if you're in danger, so 35% health, and it'll just fucking heal you straight away without you having to worry about pressing the button. Uh, in other occasions, though, Dampen Harm. A two minute cooldown reduces all damage you take by 20% to 50%. It varies for 10 seconds. The more powerful the attack attack that you are reducing, the more, more damage it will reduce, okay? So if it's something really weak sauce and you pop a dampen harm, ain't gonna do that much, right? It's gonna be like 20%. But if there's something mega coming your way, that's a 50% damage reduction. That's good shit. That's what you want there. But it is on a two-minute cooldown. Diffuse Magic's one and a half minute cooldown, but it only works on magical damage. Dampen harm works on anything that's gonna hurt you. It's magical damage taken by 60% reduction for 6 seconds. Very cool in raiding where there's some mega magical attacks coming in. And it transfers all currently active harmful magic effects on you back to their original caster if possible. Now, in raid bosses, not so much. Uh, some people might remember that it was possible for Sinestra... Uh, you could return her debuff to her and instantly kill the boss. That's called an exploit, people, and they've generally fixed that since then. It's if somebody's casting dots on you or something like that, generally PvP and, and things like that. You will find some scenarios for it in PvE for sure. Maybe some guys can list them down below. Let's tell it to them. But with Diffuse Magic, you can send those abilities back. As long as it's not crazy overpowered, Blizzard's pretty good about it. Level 90, hit combo in nearly all scenarios. Why? We're going to be doing it anyway because of our mastery, right? We're going to be constantly varying up our attacks to benefit from our mastery, and hit combo gives us just a flat 12% damage buff to that. Each successive attack in a row gives you 2% extra damage, stacking up to six times. It's what I showed you earlier on. In nearly every scenario, just having an overwhelming 12 or an overall 12% damage buff is just great. <laughs> like, it affects everything you do. That's fantastic. But not always, but just generally speaking, in. I haven't specced out of this ever in Legion. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Zhu Wen. I miss Zhu Wen. Zhu Wen was a wonderful cooldown, but now relegated to sort of the depths of hell, unfortunately. Uh, someone's an effigy of Zhu Wen. I'm going to fire off Zhu Wen because I haven't seen Zhu Wen in a really long time. So here comes Zhu Wen. I think for the guide, I can bring Zhu Wen back. Rawr! Yeah, baby. He gives you some wisdom and advice. And isn't he cool? It's such a cool spell. It's so sad we don't get to see Zuen more often, which is really quite sad. Uh, so Zuen, summons an effigy of Zuen, the White Tiger. 45 seconds. Zuen kicks ass and takes names. He attacks your primary target and strikes three enemies within 10 yards every one second with Tiger Lightning. He's got Tiger Lightning, man. 12,000 nature damage. Unfortunately, he's a three-minute cooldown, lasts 45 seconds, and he's only good if you absolutely specifically need something to die at three minutes, and it lines up perfectly, because otherwise you could have had a 12% damage buff, right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's so tricky to make him work, but if you find a scenario where something absolutely must die in this very tiny window, and it lines up nicely, sure, go with a zoo end, but more than likely not. Rushing Jade Wind. Okay, it summons a Whirly Tornado around you. I'm sure many of you have seen it. Oh, Zuan's on cooldown. I can't even spec it now. Uh, it summons a Whirly Tornado around you, doing 306,000 damage over five seconds, 208 yards, and it applies Mark of the Crane for up to two t the nearby targets. Now, Mark of the Crane. Spinning Crane Kick on its face seems rather weak, and if people don't really read how it works, generally they get fucked by Spinning Crane Kick, but Spinning Crane Kick is easily the best spell the Windwalker has. It's so good. What is it? Well, it's our AoE spell, is what it is. One of. It costs three chi. It's pretty expensive. And all it does is this. That's not a lot of damage. <laughs> and people get super pissed, like, why would I spend three chi on that when I could do a rising sun kick and a blackout kick and do like a million plus damage? Well, spinning crane kick also comes with a second part of its tooltip. While the first part just says it spins you around and does AoE damage, most people stop reading there, the next part is very important. Spinning crane kick's damage is increased by 40% for each unique target you've struck in the last 15 seconds with tiger palm, blackout kick, or rising sun kick. So if I come over here and I tiger palm this, you'll see it's got mark of the crane. Ah, and if we go over here, that's got Mark of the Crane, and you get a Mark of the Crane, and you get a Mark of the Crane, and now our spinning crane kick does way, way more damage. Way, way more damage because of all these Marks of the Crane that are up, right? That's how spinning crane kick works. 
and it's very good. And extremely, it recently got hammered into the ground because very good Windwalkers was super good at managing Mark of the Crane. Uh, you're going to get super good too because it's still great despite it being nerfed. It's still really cool. Uh, so what we can get with Rushing Jade Wind is it can stack it on two nearby targets. Unfortunately, though, it costs one cheat. It's on a five-second cooldown, right? It's on cooldown, so you can keep it 100% of the time, but really what you want is the Mark of the Cranes. The damage isn't that good. unless The more targets, the better, obviously, but you're talking like constantly doing damage to like five or six targets. Very, very fucking rare, boys and girls. Very rare uh, that they're going to be living long enough to warrant taking that over just a flat 12% damage. But if anything, hit combo is too powerful. So... Unless you immediately need to get two mark, you know, multiple marks of the crane tags up, like right fucking now, and then it burst something AOE into the floor that overrides just having 12% damage all the time elsewhere, you're not really going to be taking it. There will be some scenarios, but I'll leave that up to you. At level 100, you generally get two choices, but if you're feeling super relaxed, although I don't recommend it because you're missing out on cool gameplay, you can take Chi Orbit, which is just the worst, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst. Every five seconds, an orb of energy forms and rotates around you. There it is. Looks like some sort of green sperm. It's fucking garbage. It impacts an enemy, dealing 70,000 damage to all nearby enemies. A maximum of four orbs. There you go. Willy Dragon Punch, on the other hand, is fucking well good, and it's my preferred choice. Now, I didn't say the best choice. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said my preferred choice, because I think it looks really fucking cool. Because it looks a little something like this. Wah! And it looks fucking well good. I love it. I love it. Uh, Whirly Dragon Punch is your other choice. So Chi Orbit is generally considered to be the worst of the bunch anyway. Whirly Dragon Punch is great. One, it's an extra ability. Again, fits nicely into our mastery, similar to how we thought about Chi Wave. It does a load of AoE damage, so if we're going to be doing regular AoE, um, Serenity still kind of works out better in most scenarios, but Whirly Dragon Punch is way cooler. Remember that, and it kind of depends on your gear a little bit. I mean, don't feel guilty about taking Whirly Dragon Punch, because it's extremely cool. So 20 second cooldown, it performs a devastating whirlwind strike, dealing 6 Extra thousand damage to all nearby enemies, and it's only usable while Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick are on cooldown. That's right. So as long as you're playing your character correctly, you'll get good use out of it because you'll want to be using Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury anyway. That makes it very fucking cool. Uh, the go-to in both scenarios, though, is Serenity. It replaces Storm, Earth, and Fire, but again, I leave the choice up to you. Uh, some bosses prefer Whirling Dragon Punch, even. You know what I mean? If you're going to be doing some decent AOE, it could be very good. You enter an elevated state of mental and physical serenity for 8 seconds. Ha! 1.17 minute cooldown. That's right, you get this kind of a lot. While in this state, you deal 45% increased damage. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. And all chi consumers are free and have 50% reduced cooldown. Basically, you get to start hitting like a motherfucking truck pretty goddamn regularly. It's, it's hard. I shouldn't need to explain why Serenity is so good and why in most scenarios it pulls ahead of Whirling Dragon Punch, right? It should make a lot of sense. But you do lose Storm Earth of Fire, so don't see that as like, that's crazy. You do lose your Storm Earth of Fire cooldown for it, so there is some balance to be done there. You do lose your other DPS cooldown. Uh, but what we get to do is our Chi Spenders, which are our Rising Sun Kick, our Fists of Fury, yeah, uh, Strike of the Windlord, Blackout Kick, all these kind of things that we spend cheat on. And Spinning Crane Kick, that's right, Spinning Crane Kick. Uh, we get to spam them pretty heavily, and they have a 50% redu uh, reduced cooldown. So that 8.5 second, 2 second cooldown of Rising Sun Kick drops down to 4. Yeah, 4 and a bit, pretty fucking good. Rise, uh, Fist of Fury drops down to like 10 seconds, which means we get to pummel the fuck out of something really heavy really hardcore really fucking heavy that you get to do that uh making serenity very cool so if you do take serenity bear in mind that you just get to go absolutely crazy right you guys look rising sun kick is already back right isn't that insane <laughs> isn't that absolutely fucking ludicrous it's really quite good it's really quite good. It's a very short burst, though. Yeah, it's only for eight seconds. So you get to do this immense short burst. Uh, haste comes into play here as well, because there's more haste. As you can see by uh, the cooldowns, various abilities here, you can see like it's, this feels like 20.4. The amount of haste you have reduces the cooldown of your abilities. That means that if you take Serenity, you can like get correct amounts of values of haste. So you can put like two Fists of Fury in, things like that. Those all come into play as you get higher gear. So something to bear in mind there. Okay, so that's all the talents and stuff. That's what you want to be taking, that kind of good stuff. How do we play it? Well, I've kind of gone through how you play it, because it's all about the mastery. What we need to figure out is our uh, priority on our spells. So what we want to be doing is definitely using Touch of Death as often as possible. It's a two-minute cooldown. It hits like a fucking truck. We want to do that. It's based on your HP, power, power, power. Now, what we want to do after that 
is get the rest of our stuff on cooldown and working, okay? So whether that be Serenity or Energizing Elixir, or whatever it is, but mainly our actual DPS spells. So what we're going to be doing is things like get our Rise of Sun Kick on cooldown, get some more Chi with Tiger Palm, get up to four, then use our Fist of Fury, then Strike of the Wind Lord, and you're just working through your abilities in order of priority to get them all on cooldown. And then when you get to this point, you're kind of going to be filling in with blackout kicks and tiger palms, but preparing for the next bit. Now you'll see here, you can actually take, and this is important, you can actually take a small break with your Windwalker. There's no reason to rush, because you can see, you know, you, this isn't filling up super fast. And you can already see how empty I get, so I can throw in, quite effectively, a energizing elixir without much issue, right? You can see how that all works together because very quickly you can run out of resources and you get a steady build up. So when I was talking about energized elixir earlier, don't worry about it too much because you can absolutely get good use out of it and get all your resources back because you can drain them very quickly while waiting for your spells to come back off cooldown. And the better you get, more haste comes involved and so on and so forth. So that's your single target is going to be getting that touch of death going and then getting everything else going, right? Which is going to be just keeping our... Build up our hit combos. You can remember your mastery still counts. If you don't have hit combo, it's still beneficial. I can't express this enough. It's still very beneficial to use different spells one after the other. Hit combo just provides you the 12, 12 uh, damage buff, right? And then you can wait. If I press blackout kick now, I'm going to fuck up my uh, ability. So I take a pause there. No reason to get super spammy with it. Yeah? You don't have to do that. You can take your time quite effectively. And then you can go into crazy, crazy burst with uh, Serenity. But remember, you need your stuff back off cooldown. Wait till you're actually, you know, you don't need to rush this stuff. And I think that's the most important lesson I can teach you about Windwalker is take your time a little bit. Make sure when you're setting up for attacks like Serenity that you're ready to go to get the best out of it each time. And that's where the consistency comes from. You can see there's no real RNG in this spec. We do have the ability to get a free blackout kick, but it happens pretty rarely. And honestly, it kind of gets in the way sometimes because in your mind, you've already planned the next abilities. When it comes to AoE, you're going to be doing something uh, very similar, but you're going to be moving around. The only ability you drop here, you're still going to use your Touch of Death because it's very important. The only ability you're really going to drop here is Rising Sun Kicks. It costs too much Chi, and what we really want is to get Mark of the uh, Mark of the Crane going, right? So Tiger Palms, Blackout Kicks, that's fine. Yeah, moving around, getting these going, trying to fit them in wherever possible. And keeping ourselves rocking and rolling, getting these ticks going. You can see I'm moving around the Tigers and getting more and more keeping the crane ticks going you're still going to be using all the other abilities you're just dropping out rising sun kicks you want to get marks of the cranes up and it costs two chi and you want to get rid of that because you need three chi for spinning crane kicks so i'm going to show you more of this in a gameplay video and that'll go alongside with this ladies and gentlemen that is your gameplay stuff for the windwalker monk in conclusion to the windwalker monk i truly advise anybody to take a stab at this check out this play style and probably appreciate just how cool it is once you get the hang of it. It's super, super fun. It really is something that I enjoy playing every opportunity I get to. I try and jump on my monk as often as possible just to play around with it because it's so much fun. Some resources I'd recommend then. Certainly some weak ores and tell me when's to keep an eye on when all these things, all these little plates that you're going to be spinning are coming back. Even if it's your small spells, use something like that. And also I recommend once you get to the high levels to so go and check out peakofserenity.com. It's linked down below. Those guys are really doing some tremendous work on Windwalkers there if you want to really get into the nitty gritty of how things happen when you get legendaries and all the advanced gears and tier bonuses and all that kind of stuff that await you in your future as a Windwalker. So if you find that you love it, say hello to those guys for me. Bye-bye.